Hi, this is Gabe with HTP. Today we're going to go over consumables for your torch. Um, this is a area where a lot of beginners kind of get in trouble and just so you know, at one point I was a beginner just like everybody else. So when I started TIG welding as an amateur, just basically garage TIG welding, I would buy all the possible cups you could possibly get that I could afford um, trying different ways to get my TIG welds better. Um, now that's not a really good way to go about it because you know the more you TIG weld the better you get and I figured the best equipment or different equipment that you can have would automatically make me a better welder but I ended up spending a lot of money on different cups damaging a lot of cups buying the wrong cups and gas lens for different situations and kind of I'm gonna go over a couple things that may or may not help you but at least you'll get a little bit of knowledge on what goes with what so everything that's laid out on the table here are different cups collets collet bodies um, back caps diffusers stuff like that and everything here has a mate that it goes with and not everything is the same not everything will go into the same thing all right, so basically all the consumables we have laid out here are gonna have their joining uh, partner, but the one thing that you gotta first is identify what torch head you have. So this guy here is a nine series. So the nine series is gonna be different than 17 series. So these two are gonna be different and you can noticeably tell the difference in the size or the diameter of the actual lenses. That hook up so you have your nine that goes into this guy and the other one that will fit is going to be your nine and your 20 will have the same consumables and then on this guy would be your 17 would be the same the 18 and the 26 will all have the similar consumables so it doesn't matter flex head or rigid um, you just want to make sure that the actual uh, lens that is threading in there is the correct size. Once you know what torch you have, typically you can go onto the website and find whatever consumables fit with it. So there's going to be different things that you're going to be able to use. You have a collet body or a gas lens. It depends on who you talk to. A lot of people will tell you, you know, gas lens is where it's at. You know, I use only gas lens. There's people that are older school that only like to use the standard collet body and I, I think there's a time and place for each and every one of these um, and it all depends on what you're using. So you have different uh, versions of the collets as well. Uh, this one's going to be a split which you can see by the slit that goes through it and then you're going to have a different one which is called a wedge type. So the differences between this is this split tightens down and clamps down onto the tungsten, whereas the wedge type basically will wedge the tungsten in place. Personally, I typically go with the wedge type. The reason being is because I see less failures for me um, with the wedge type, because sometimes I have a habit of over tightening the back cap or getting paranoid that it's leaking, so I just use the wedge type versus the split collet. What happens with this guy is it'll start to twist and you'll noticeably see a difference in performance with this guy. As far as your heat shields, they'll be different on whatever you're using. So if I'm using this gas lens, you're typically gonna be using this style of diffuser. And essentially it's gonna look like that. Whereas if I am using the standard collar body, you'll have this type of diffuser and you can see it has that recess in there so that when you thread this on it sits perfectly. Another thing that you're going to have is the back cap. Back caps are going to be different. You have your little button cap. This is the full lengthwise and then you have a, a smaller one uh, which is in between. And Typically it just depends on what you're welding. If you're welding in a tight confined space you're probably going to want this button cap. Um, I typically run the, the mid one. That's just what I do. Now, there's gonna be all sorts of different gas lenses that you have. And 
essentially all this guy is doing is regulating the amount of argon that it's getting pushed out onto the weld pool. So if you have something like a 19, uh, the diameter from here to here is a lot bigger than this guy, which is, this is a 12. So that's essentially all you're doing. You also have the other option of running these Pyrex cups. Uh, this one's from Edge. I like these ones as well because you can actually see through the cup. And a lot of times with beginners, uh, you you have a problem with vision as far as where to position your head or look. This is nice because you're able to look through this. Um, another cool thing about the edge cups themselves is you have your adapter, which is this guy here, and you can go from your eight cup to you know a different size like this seven, and and so on and so forth and this will stay the same the only thing that will change would be the the distance on the cup and like i said this is the amount of gas coverage so if you're welding stainless steel you typically will be on a bigger cup you might go up to something like a 19 uh, edge has an 18 that would work as well and essentially what you're doing is just trying to keep contamination out of the weld when you're welding. When I do, you know, aluminum, um, I'm typically on the stubby type of standard collet and I, I don't typically use gas lenses. And the reason why is because when I light up with a gas lens, the arc with the AC typically will follow the gas lens. So if I'm spitting out gas, you'll get a lot of arc wandering, whereas I use the standard collet, I find that I get a better arc to start with. When would you use this cup compared to this cup, just in general? So, like if we we're doing a direct comparison between this, which is a 12, this guy, which is an eight, you would normally see AC or DC, the eight is gonna be your number one overall use, use cup. If you want a little more gas coverage, which like I mentioned a little earlier with stainless, you go to a 12. You want a lot of gas coverage, you go up to the 19. And you'll ask, oh, well, why don't I just use the 19 all the time? Because now I'm getting a bunch of gas coverage and I'm good to go. Well, this one is gonna hurt the bank account because you're gonna be running you know, 35 to 40 uh, CHF of argon versus you know, 25, 30 to 20 and below. Another, I guess, con would be if I'm doing like a tight exhaust or I'm in a confined space and I'm trying to get my torch in there, this, you know, big cup is not gonna get to where you need to get to. Uh, the 12 may or may not, the eight probably be a lot easier to get into. Well, how do I know how much gas coverage I need? Well, that's a cool thing. A lot of times with these cups, you'll usually get directions and on the labeling or even on the website, as far as the cup manufacturer, they'll typically tell you what the recommended flow rate is. But for my piece? For your piece, typically, I mean, it, it, it comes down to whether or not, let's, let's take stainless for example, whether or not I want color in my stainless or I wanna keep it as straw-like and as correctly welded as possible, the higher the gas flow, typically you're gonna keep a lot of the color out and keep it from contaminating. A good indication of what, um, what you should run is gonna, the tungsten typically will tell you what you should be running. So if your tungsten, when you let go or get off the torch, it starts to blue, you're typically either running too little of a post flow or you are running too little of gas, gas coverage. So a lot of times with these cups, it's gonna, it's gonna come down to what I'm welding, what position I'm welding in, how tight is the configuration. And really, it's gonna come down to user preference. If I like the way this one welds, you know, and I can do everything with this one. Why am I gonna, you know, take time out of my day to, to switch between these two and this one? And then now I'm gonna do an exhaust header, so I want to do this. But now I want to do an intercooler, so I'm gonna go back to this. Uh, I mean, it, it it is beneficial to switch around, but 
once you find a good enough cup that you really like in stainless, there's a really good cup that I want to use in aluminum. Typically what you'll find is that I just want to run that cup in that situation. Okay, so if I'm rolling something like this that's 18 gauge, how do I know whether I should be using a number eight cup or a number five? So that'll be gas coverage. So if we look at like this, this one here, you can see your has or your heat affected zone. Um, and you can see the little envelope on both sides. So this one has too much heat into it. This one has just about the right amount of heat. But isn't that with amperage? Yes, yes and no. <laughs> so <laughs> it's almost a balancing act between amperage, argon flow, and filler rod. If you have too big of a filler rod, it's gonna take more amps to melt and therefore you're gonna put more heat into the material. If you have a small filler rod, you're gonna use less amps. But if you run higher gas, you'll have better coverage. So it, it's really, you're juggling uh, a couple different things at the same time, which kind of makes TIG welding, you know, hard to do because you're, there's three things at all time that are happening. You have your torch hand, your TIG filler rod, and you have your right foot or left foot, whichever foot you're using for the pedal. It all comes down to personal preference. All, all of these right here would do that exact same weld. It's, it's just the, the person that is using the torch and really your eye. But if this was stainless steel, we would see a huge difference between this guy and this guy. If this was aluminum, we would see a huge difference between this guy and this guy. And you notice that I went with this guy in stainless and I went back this way on aluminum. Aluminum doesn't need that much argon, it just needs enough when the puddle is basically molten. Uh, so this one would have a lower CFH? Yeah, because the diameter itself... Is smaller. In aluminum, you don't need that much gas flow. Well, for stainless steel, I know this is completely wrong because you're supposed to use that cup with a higher CFH. Correct. But what if you use that cup with the same CFH and all the gas is coming out? You can definitely do that. The thing that really saves you between this and this is your filler rod. So when you're welding stainless steel, you want your filler rod in the actual envelope, mm -hmm. which is essentially the envelope is from here to here, the amount of gas. So if I'm welding this and I do this, which is a very bad habit that I have because I do a lot of aluminum, uh, in stainless steel, when you pull it out of that envelope, it's contaminating the filler and you're shoving it back in. So now, if I'm welding with this guy, my envelope is tiny. You gotta keep it here. But if I have the big guy, it's a lot bigger that I can go and actually pull it out and actually see. Because what happens a lot of times with beginners when they're welding, especially stainless steel, is you can't see the weld. So then you slow down or you move or you pull the filler rod out of the way to see. And that's a lot of times will get you in trouble. So like I said, essentially, all of these will do the same thing. It's just, you know, smaller spaces that you want to get into you want better coverage or uh, you know less color in your stainless or you want to keep it you know from getting contaminated or you're doing aluminum and you don't need that much gas it, it, it all depends on personal preference and I can't recommend enough to find what fits you the best and what fits me doesn't necessarily mean it fits you so we'll go over you know a couple of what ifs or how it happens or what if I use this, what if I use that and kind of show a little bit of the difference to kind of help you guys out. I can't, you know, magically get all that information to you, but I hope the more information I give you, the easier you're going to find to continue welding.